Hi, this morning we're at Brunswick Point just outside of Vancouver and this is one of the several places where you can photograph a short-eared owl and for the one bird I associate with bird photography at Vancouver it's short-eared owls uh, we've been here over a week this is the first sunrise we've seen it's been grey leaden clouds previously so you don't get any sparkle in the light till about nine o'clock in the morning although sunrise is about ten past eight I think typically but anyway this morning first time the trouble is it's a bit of a walk in so I'm on my way this is my fourth visit I and mean, I haven't taken a picture of a short hit owl yet twice it was raining heavily so we just drove around the roads hoping to do something from the car window and the third time I walked down to the point where the short eared owls are photographed. There was, I think, eight photographers there all lined up. So I was in the right place, but they didn't come close enough. So I've come back this morning. So on the previous occasions I've walked down here, there's been lots of cars parked, despite the no parking signs. So I was tempted, instead of parking in the official parking lot, I saved myself a 10 minute walk if I'm parking down here. And that's 10 minutes each way, so 20 minutes walk. But I'm glad I didn't, because one of the photographers who was there the other day received a parking ticket. I don't know how much it cost him, but uh, obviously they do check up on you. I don't think this man is enthusiastically calling me across. I think he's just pleased to see the sun. But this is where the photographers were standing the other day. But this morning, I'm going right past this. So I've got myself in the right position. I've gone down into the marsh. If I go any further, the water's getting a bit deep. I'm gonna get wet feet and I don't have any Wellingtons with me. So this will do. Ideally, I would place myself against a bush, but there isn't one. There's one 40 meters to the right hand side but then I'm not at the right angle. I want to be this way so the sun is behind me. But this will do. I just, there's lots of them out there, lots of Northern Harrier and short-eared owls. Just need them to come closer. The spectacular sunrise didn't last long. This is definitely one of those times you've got to use manual exposure. The birds are sometimes flying low against the grasses and the next thing you know they're against the white sky. So I've manually exposed and I've set it against that bush in the, in the background. That's a nice neutral density bush. So whatever shutter speed and aperture I get against that bush should be right as a bird flies against the sky. I'm not by myself. There's photographers to the left and to the right of me. I've chosen a spot where I feel there's a runway through the grass an area where I feel the short-eared owls will be naturally inclined to follow. Two hours later, I wasn't so convinced. This morning has not been a great success, but I'm tempted to put this YouTube film out anyway because I think I'm creating a false impression. You might get the impression that bird photography is easy, that I just go out every day and just take pictures, they just magically happen. But of course, it's not like that. I only put a YouTube film out when I succeed. The nine times out of ten when I get nothing, you don't see that YouTube film. So perhaps I should put a couple out where I actually don't get a result. I've moved over to this hedgerow on the right hand side because there's been a northern harrier flying up and down this hedgerow on, on the left hand side of it. It's a nice channel that it's been flying through. And I didn't have to wait long before it flew along that hedgerow yet again. In fact, it did so several times. The Northern Harrier and the Hen Harrier that we get in the UK used to be the same species, but now they've been split into two. Visually, they are very hard to tell apart. Shutter speed wise, I was going for my usual 2,500th of a second I could probably go slower, it's not a very fast flying bird. And even a male bird came along. And then some short eared owls.
still very impressed with the OM1 camera and how it doesn't get distracted when the L goes past some vegetation, it still keeps it in focus. Well, just as I was about to pack up, the Northern Harrier came along the, the hedgerow here and I got some pictures of that. And then the short-eared owl came along that channel that I was initially hoping to film it in and I got some pictures of it. They're probably not stunning, but I got something of them. I had to put the 1.4 extender back on. So maybe I'll put this film out as a almost didn't work YouTube film. When I got back to that parking area, all of the cars had parking tickets on them, so I'm glad I didn't park there. We'll just look at a few other pictures that I took in the Vancouver area. Lots of American bald eagles, extremely common and so approachable. Nothing like our golden eagles. This is the American crow. What the difference is between this and our crow, I couldn't say. The American robin, well that's a very different bird from our robin. It's very much a thrush looking species, very colourful, eating worms on the lawn in the rain and, like our thrushes, taking berries too. Here I didn't have to do this manually exposed, I can just compensate, so I'm shooting aperture priority then compensating by about one and a third stops to allow for that white sky. But unlike the elves, which were flying sometimes against the grass and sometimes against the sky, this is consistent, they're always against the sky. Anna's hummingbird, I didn't do very well with these, although they're very common. But here it's against the sky, I've compensated. If I hadn't have compensated, then this is how the picture would look. But really what I did was I moved around until I got this tree behind the bird. Then I don't have to compensate so much. Because I haven't got white sky behind it now, it's more of a grey colour. Whenever you go on a trip such as this, you need help to try and find the wildlife and where you might be able to photograph. There are lots of guidebooks to almost everywhere in the world with site maps in showing you where you should be going. So I had this one, where to watch birds in Vancouver. There's another one, where to watch birds in British Columbia. I noticed there was one too, where to watch birds in Vancouver Island too. They are widespread, but as well as books, of course there's websites. So before you go, you Google bird watching Vancouver bird photography Vancouver and even wildlife watching Vancouver. Next week we'll look at bird photography at Burnaby Lake Vancouver. Thanks for watching.